how close are we? Uh, and, and should we expect as media consumers to really see an impact later on for this fall viewing season and certainly into next year's production season as well? Well, Dom, I wouldn't get your hopes up too much. This is the first time that the real negotiating committees for the writers and studios are sitting down in over three months, and they're still pretty far apart. They had a meeting last week to talk about holding this meeting. Uh, that being said, this is obviously the first step in the right direction. You know, you need to sit down at the negotiating table before you can cut a deal. Uh, now, for consumers, you know, we'll, the networks will start to feel it in October because their their fall slates are already going to be impacted by these strikes. So they're going to take a hit on the advertising side of things. Um, there's just going to be less product on the broadcast networks in the fall. In streaming, uh, some of the big streaming services have a little bit more flexibility. Uh, they've got shows that have already been kind of put aside, uh, and they'll probably be okay at some point into the spring of next year. But if the strikes continue to drag on, uh, they will start to feel an impact in the spring and summer of 24. Alex, there, we, we've heard some stories and reports throughout the, the New York media market, the L.A. media market and elsewhere about just how much of an impact this strike is having, not just on the studios and businesses, but on the human beings, the actors and writers who are now struggling to make rent, put food on the table, that sort of thing. When we talk about how far apart people are, how far do we think both sides are willing to go? How much pain can they tolerate? before something has to give and something has to happen. Yeah, I mean, look, the the the, the Actors Guild has said they're ready for a six-month strike, and the Writers Guild has said a similar thing. Uh, this is a, These strikes are having a serious impact on the local economies in New York and Los Angeles. It's not just the writers and actors, of course. It's also all the production staff, the catering staff, all the local businesses that rely on these productions to happen. So the impact is really serious. Uh, the studios, you know, they, they've they been stockpiling shows, you know, prepping for a long strike. So everyone, I think, is really dug in here. That being said, I do think people do want to get a deal done. And that's why we're seeing the writers come back to the negotiating table and the studios come back to the negotiating table today. And, and what exactly would you expect to see in the coming weeks with regard to which parts of the the, the negotiation will see some movement the first? Is it on things like residuals? Is it on things like the use of someone's name, image, and likeness with regard to artificial intelligence down the line? What, what seems to be the place where we could see at least a little bit of daylight between those two, the, 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 the two? So one of the things that became a real sticking point in the first round of negotiations was generative artificial intelligence. And it does sound like that is an area where the studios are budging a little bit. We don't know exactly what their new proposal is going to be, but they have indicated that they are going to you know, give a new proposal on AI and how it can be used for writers and presumably when the actors come to the table uh, for them as well. So that does seem to be a kind of a sticking point where there's going to be movement. The tough one is still streaming residuals. Uh, it's not clear how far the studios can go on that on that front because the economics of streaming are so different than traditional television.